In this video, I'm gonna take you through some of the easiest but most important optimization actions that you can be completing for your Google search campaigns. Now, I do also need to stress that if you wanna see the best results with your Google Ads account, in 2025, you need to make sure that you're not only making the right optimizations, but that you are also got your campaigns set up the right way. Now, this video is part of my Get Google Ready for 2025 series, which is a playlist which I take you through how to set up all of your Google Ads campaigns correctly and also optimize them. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll show you where you can watch all of the videos in this playlist. But right now, we're gonna get into a screen share so I can take you through the practical steps of optimizing your Google search campaigns in 2025. Let's go. Now, one thing that I do want to stress is that if you don't yet have access to my Google Ads optimization checklist, and this is the checklist which takes you through how to complete all the optimizations for your Google search, shopping, performance max, display, demand gen, and also video campaigns. If you follow the link in the description of this video below, you can then get free access to my Google Ads optimization checklist. But as I said, I really want to be focusing on your search campaigns. So as you can see for search campaigns, I think that as well over 70 different optimization actions, but I really wanna be taking you through two really important ones. And the first one is, I'm gonna take you through how to go through and complete your keyword targeting. And then we're also gonna go in and take you through how to complete your split tests for your search campaign. So what we're really focusing on here is the targeting, making sure our ads are being triggered by the right search terms. And then with our ads, we wanna make sure that the ads are having the biggest cut through. So we're getting the highest levels of click-through ratios. So let's start with this search term audit. And when you complete your search term audit, when you're in a Google search campaign, which we are here, you need to go into insights and reports, and then you need to go into your search terms. And what this is going to do is that this is gonna give you a whole list of search inquiries. And these are the search terms which have actually triggered your ads. So the difference here is with your keywords. That's the keywords that you're giving Google to target your ads. Your search terms are the actual search terms which have triggered your ads. And you wanna be doing two things. What you wanna be doing here is you wanna be looking for potential new keywords that you can add as exact match keywords. And then you wanna also be looking at keywords that you can add, add as negative keywords. So let me just give you the first reason as to why I look to add and build out my exact match keyword list. So when I'm creating my Google search terms, I like to have two or three broad match keywords that have a longer keyword phrase in it, ideally four or five keywords in it. The reason for that is because the majority of searches that are happening in Google Ads right now well over 15% are brand new in that they've never been searched before. So we wanna be always making sure that we're staying ahead of any new metrics or any new search trends that are happening. The other advantage of broad match keywords is that you are also taking advantage of the full suite and the full options that Google can use to target your ads. So it also takes greater context into your landing pages. Three or four years ago, I would have never been saying this, but broad match is now a really, really key part for success with Google ads. And that's just because there's been a massive switch and a change this comes down to a lot more newer search terms and also people are searching longer search keyword phrases. As search is moving to more of a conversational model, this is gonna change more and more rapidly. So you wanna be making sure you've got some broad match keywords. Now, the benefit for adding in exact match, so people ask, well, why do you add in exact match keywords? And it comes down to this, is that when you look at your search term audit, you can see down the bottom here, you can see this total other search terms. And you can see that that's you know got 141 of 451. So of a total, just say under 600 different search phrases that have been used, we're not getting 140 of those search terms. We don't know. We're not seeing any data on it. But the more exact match keywords that you add, Google has to give you that data because you're requesting that data from them. The other thing that it does assist with is that when you are reviewing your keywords, you can also review it at the keyword level. And if you're using dynamic keyword insertion in your ad copy, you're then getting more highly relevant ads. So that's why I look to build out my exact match keywords and have a mixture of broad and exact match in my ad groups. So you can see through here, so we've seen that we've got this keyword. I've had to block the keywords just for privacy. All you want to be going through and having a look at is that are these search terms relevant and do I want to add them as a keyword? And let's just say we find this one here. We want to add that as a keyword. You just go through, select add as a keyword and then click save. Now, Google will automatically add that as a broad match. So if we don't want it to be a broad match, what you can do, you can just add in the bracket either side so what that's done is that that's now gonna add it automatically as an exact match keyword. So once you've selected the term, it'll pop up, just add in those brackets and then it automatically becomes an exact match keyword. The other thing that you wanna do is you wanna go through and you wanna add in negative keywords. So you can see that we've added in some here, 
as a negative keyword. So you select them and then add it as a negative keyword. One thing I do want to do is I just want to point out because people do sometimes ask about this is that your negative keywords do operate differently as your targeted keywords. So this is directly from Google. So what we're looking at here, if you were to add a negative keyword, say for example, running shoes as a broad match, the definition here is that your ad won't show if the search contains the exact keyword terms in the same order. So the way that, and this can get confusing, especially if you've been involved in Google ads for a little while, what I want you to think about is that adding in a negative broad match keyword acts like an old school exact match keyword. So it's like a complete opposite in that you can see here that if you've got running shoes in here, your ads will show for blue tennis shoes, a running shoe, but it won't show for running shoes. So the way that exact match keywords used to work is that basically you had to have it exactly the same. And that's kind of what negative keywords work on a broad match setting. So I know it gets a little bit confusing, but that's just something you need to think about. For phrase match, so if you were to add it as a phrase match as running shoes, so this is a negative phrase match, it says here your ads won't show if the search contains the exact keyword terms in the same order. So this now comes to order. So this is working like a phrase match used to work, but without closed variants. So you can see from here is that, you know, running shoes is the phrase match negative keyword, but it'll still show for running shoe, but it won't show for things like shoes running or running shoes. And now let's get into the exact match negative keyword. This is the most precise. So it's probably the most tightest matching in that it would only block it out for running shoes. So for nothing else. So what I will do as well in this video is in the description, I will also put a link to this page because as you can see, there's a large documentation there, but I do just want to give some clarification on how those search terms work. That's the first task that you wanna be doing is you wanna be going through and reviewing your search term audits and adding in extra exact match keywords and also adding in extra negative keywords. And the goal there is to really target and really focus what search terms are triggering your ads. So the second big task that I wanna take you through is all about split testing your ads. Now there has been a bit of a discussion around this that people think because you're using responsive search ads that you don't need to do split testing. I still am very much seeing better results with with split testing. Now, Google released back in 2022 that they needed in and around about two to 3,000 impressions to complete a full round of split testing. But that was on expanded text ads. They haven't released any extra data from that anymore. They have that data. They're just obviously not sharing it with us. The problem is, is that if you've got 15 different headlines, you don't really know which headlines are giving you the best results. So that's why we still run through a level of split testing. Now, what I recommend with your ad copy split testing is that you want to essentially have the exactly the same ad, but the second ad has one difference in it. And the difference could be you're pinning in a call to action or you're pinning in dynamic keyword insertion or you're testing a different landing page, whatever you want to be doing there. But you just want to make sure that the testing is only testing one thing. If you're testing multiple things, you don't know what the difference is. So let me just give you an example in through here. So we've got two ads that we're currently running at the moment. I'll go to the last 30 days so we can see the data here. What we're seeing here at the moment is that this top ad, they've both got very, very similar click-through ratios, but what the difference is, is that this top ad has a much better conversion rate. So it's looking at 16% versus seven and a half percent, you know, cost per conversion is, you know, about $18 cheaper. I'm going to keep that selected because we're going to go back and see some extra data. And you can actually see what's happening from here is that when we included an extra two weeks, this one had a high click-through ratio. This one's had a slightly low click-through ratio, but I'm just gonna move it back to the last 30 days because I want you to watch this conversion rate. So you can see this conversion rate is really starting to move apart. And you know, the last 14 days, this is now 26% versus 9%. So this is now a clear winning ad. So we know that this is the winning ad. So what we wanna do here is that we wanna pause this secondary ad. So I would then pause that. We then want to copy this top ad. Then you can also select paste. And it's really, really important to note that when you come to this section, just go through, you want to go through and if the ad already exists in the destination, create a duplicate and then you paste it in there. So what I just shared there are two core optimizations that you can be completing in your Google search campaigns so that you can get better results in 2025. And as I said at the start of that screen share, if you want to get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist, so you're never missing out on any of those important optimization actions, not only for your search campaigns, but also for shopping, performance max, display, video, and demand gen, just follow that link in the description below. And finally, if you did want to watch all of my videos inside of my Get Google Ready playlist for 2025, so you know not only how to correctly set up, but also optimize all of your Google Ads campaigns that you will need to grow your business. Go through and watch this playlist right here. Thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy and I look forward to seeing you in one of those videos in the playlist right now. See ya.